In this lecture, we talk about the pitchfork bifurcation. This bifurcation is rather common in physical problems that have symmetry. Consider the beam buckling problem. We had a small weight on top of a beam and as long as the weight was small, the beam was stable. So when the load is small, the beam is stable in the vertical position. So we have a stable fixed point corresponding to zero deflection. And now consider the case where we have a larger weight that is placed which forces the beam to buckle. So we find that the beam buckles under the weight and the beam may in fact buckle either to the left or to the right. The vertical position is now unstable and two new symmetrical fixed points have been born. There are two types of pitchfork bifurcations. One is a supercritical and the other is a subcritical. We now consider a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. The normal form is x dot is equal to rx minus x cubed and this equation is invariant under the change of variable x to minus x. What that means is that if we replace x by minus x, we get the equation back again. So let's plot the vector field for different values of r. So for r less than 0, we plot x dot versus x. And we find that we have a stable fixed point. The origin is the only fixed point and it is stable. Now consider r is equal to 0 and plot x dot versus x. We again have only one stable fixed point. The origin is still stable but note that the linearization actually vanishes. Now consider r greater than 0 and we plot x dot versus x and here is where we get some interesting dynamics. We get two stable fixed points and an unstable fixed point. So we are stable at x star is equal to plus the square root of r and stable at x star is equal to minus the square root of r and the origin is unstable. So the origin is actually now unstable. Two new stable fixed points on either side of the origin have now emerged. Now we have this interesting situation where for r less than 0, we had a stable fixed point. For r is equal to 0, the origin was still stable. But if you look at the linearization, then the linearization would vanish at the fixed point. And then when r was greater than 0, we found that the origin turned unstable. And we had these two new stable fixed points which emerged on either side of the origin. Now let's consider the bifurcation diagram for a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. So as is the norm, we go ahead and plot x versus r. That is stable and the dashed line is unstable. 
So the straight line is stable and that's another stable branch. The term supercritical usually means that the bifurcating solutions themselves are stable. Let's consider an example. Analyze the system x dot is equal to rx minus x cubed for r less than 0, equal to 0, and greater than 0 via a potential function v of x. The potential for x dot is equal to f of x is defined by f of x is equal to minus dv dx. So we need to solve minus dv dx is equal to rx minus x cubed. So we integrate to get v of x is equal to minus a half rx squared plus a quarter x to the 4, where we have neglected the constant of integration. First consider r less than 0. We plot v versus x. You get a quadratic. And you see that the quadratic has a minimum at the origin and so the origin is stable. And r is equal to 0. Again, plotting v versus x. The minimum is at the origin, so the origin is still stable. And for r greater than 0, we get something more complicated. We have a local maximum at the origin, implying an unstable fixed point, and symmetric pair of local minima implying stable fixed points. Now let's consider a subcritical pitchfork bifurcation. With x dot is equal to rx minus x cube, the supercritical case, the cubic term is stabilizing. With x dot is equal to rx plus x cube, the cubic term is actually destabilizing and we get a subcritical pitchfork bifurcation. We now plot the bifurcation diagram for the subcritical pitchfork. So it's customary to plot x versus r The dashed lines represent the unstable branches. So that's also unstable. The non-zero fixed points x star is equal to plus minus the square root of minus r are unstable. And the origin is stable for r less than zero and unstable for r greater than zero. Now when r is greater than 0, one can show that x of t would tend to plus or minus infinity in a finite amount of time starting from any initial condition x of naught not equal to 0. In real systems, the instability is actually opposed by the stabilizing effect of higher order terms. Assuming that the system is symmetric under x to minus x, the first stabilizing term would be x to the 5. So the canonical example for a subcritical pitchfork is x dot is equal to rx plus x cubed minus x to the 5. And now we plot the bifurcation diagram for the subcritical pitchfork. So we plot x versus r. And it turns out to be quite uh, interesting looking bifurcation diagram.
as is customary the straight lines are stable and the dotted lines are unstable branches for small x the picture is qualitatively the same the origin is locally stable for r less than 0 two branches of unstable fixed points actually bifurcate from the origin when r is equal to 0 now due to the presence of the x to the 5 term the unstable branches actually turn around and become stable at r is equal to rs and these stable branches then exist for all r greater than rs now here are some notes about the bifurcation diagram when rs is less than r is less than 0 we have the existence of two qualitatively different stable states the origin and the large amplitude fixed points depending on the initial condition x0 one can get to the different stable states as t tends to infinity so if we start the system at x star is equal to 0 and slowly increase the parameter r it remains stable at the origin till r is equal to 0 and then will actually jump to one of the large amplitude branches as r increases further the state moves out along the large amplitude branch so that's the jump that will actually occur if we now decrease r the state remains on the stable branch even when r is less than 0 and it is only when r actually goes past rs does the state actually jump back to the origin so the lack of reversibility as a parameter is varied is called hysteresis so this lack of reversibility can now be seen in the bifurcation diagram the bifurcation at rs is a saddle node bifurcation stable and unstable fixed points are created as the parameter r is increased we offer a few last comments a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation is closely related to continuous or second order phase transitions in statistical mechanics in the engineering literature it is called a safe bifurcation because the non-zero fixed points are born at small amplitude now let's make some comments about the subcritical pitchfork oh because these are the two types you've got a subcritical and a supercritical so let's just go ahead and highlight them so a subcritical is related to discontinuous or first order phase transitions and in the engineering literature is often seen as dangerous 
because of the jump from zero to large amplitude. This lecture was about a bifurcation called a pitchfork bifurcation. Now there are lots of situations in the physical world where you have symmetry in them. Let's give an example. Now recall the beam buckling problem. So we had a beam and on top of the beam you went and placed a weight. Once the weight crossed a certain threshold, the beam actually buckled under the weight. So the weight actually acts as a control parameter which when it crosses a certain threshold, the beam actually buckled. Having said that, it wasn't clear whether it would buckle to the left or it would buckle to the right. So this is a very simple example motivating some symmetry in real world systems. The pitchfork bifurcation comes in two forms. One is a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation and the other is a subcritical pitchfork bifurcation. In the supercritical case, the normal form for the supercritical is x dot is equal to rx minus x cube. So what we did was we had an example and we actually looked at the bifurcation diagram for this particular example. And what we found was that the parameter as it changed, fixed points were not destroyed but the stability of the fixed point actually can change. Okay. Then we went on to the subcritical case. In the subcritical case, you have you can start with an equation of the form x dot is equal to rx plus x cube. So the positive x cube is destabilizing, but in the real world, what would happen is that you would actually have another high order term which would act as a stabilizing force. So the equations would be of the form x dot is equal to rx plus x cube minus x to the 5. Okay. Now when you look at the bifurcation diagram of this particular system, then there are a few interesting things that actually show up. Number one is that you have a jump in the bifurcation diagram. So if the equilibrium is at a particular state, and the parameter actually crosses a certain threshold, then the system can take a fairly large jump to another branch. The second interesting thing that shows up is the potential lack of reversibility as parameters vary. So what that basically means is that if a parameter was in one place and then it moved to another place, you had a certain change in the solutions. And then when it actually came back, it didn't actually go back to the original state, but actually went to some other state. So this lack of reversibility is referred to as hysteresis. So the ability for the bifurcation diagram to exhibit a jump and to exhibit hysteresis is what we found in the subcritical case.